we go. Hello, my name is John Thuman. I'm here with Russ Ratchin. How are you doing, Russ? I'm good. How are you? I am great, man. Hey, we're going to talk about just a general overview of Aster and just our own personal experiences and what we've been able to do and you know, the things that we've seen out in the marketplace and whatnot. What do you say? Sure. Awesome. I, I think, you know, I remember the first time I saw Aster. It was three years ago. And um, I was blown away. Because I, I've been working on SQL databases. I mean, you name it, I've worked on it. Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase, Netiza, Greenplum, I mean, DB2. I've worked on mid-range systems, mainframes, you name it, right? And when I stepped up to Astra for the first time and I started really digging into it, I was like, whoa, there are things that I can do here that I cannot do on another environment that you know are simple to do. My power of ANSI SQL is pretty good. And with that, I was able to quickly learn many different disciplines, many different kinds of analytics very rapidly. And um, I, I was uh, almost like a kid in a candy store when I first got to ask her. And then I saw this uh, graph gen thing. And it was like an emotional you know, I think I'm talking one of the one of the pioneers here of that. So <laughs> anyway, um, but, uh, but go me, ahead. Yeah, you, no, let, let me start by saying I actually have not worked on mainframes, so I like that. that shows. <laughs> Just dated myself. Even, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mom. But it, yeah, I mean, it sounds a bit dramatic to uh, you know and, and talk about this emotional response, but but I you know like you. My experience was ANSI SQL. My experience was working with these databases. My experience was working creating these these interactive reports, um, you know, lot, lots of uh, uh, lots of joins, lots of unions, you know, all, all your all your good SQL stuff, you know, indexing this and that, and and yet you you always found the the brick wall. You always found this is as far as SQL can take me. What do I do next? And you can hack together options. But I had the same experience at you know discovering Aster when I came on board here. You know, there's actually a way that you can break through this wall. There actually is this way that you can really combine this this SQL reporting approach, which which we all should be using because it's great at what it does, right? The language of business, it's, it is. But then also using this programmatic approach, this way to to do looping, recursive, fun, you know, all these other kinds of things that that SQL just can't do. And it's the combination of these two things. Right. That, it's the ability to really look at multiple records across a partition mm -hmm. and be able to do intelligent things with them. Yep. You know, the whole end path, uh, you know, uh, SQL MapReduce function is about finding paths and patterns within multiple sets of records, right? Yep. And um, to me, when I first saw that and the ability to do that. I, we, I tried to mimic that in SQL, in the ANSI SQL, and in you know, languages like .NET and C Sharp and things like that. And, you know, it was just amazing what I could do with one command. Right? Absolutely, and, and, you, are, and you, know, you, you alluded to this too. Because you are spending less time on figuring out maybe methodology, it's opening doors for you to say, hey, oh, this is, you know, K-means is applicable here. Uh, GLM or decision trees is applicable here. And rather than spending all your time researching, well, where do I even start with starting to run this? You actually have this out of the box decision trees function or this out of the box k-means function that just plugs into this SQL MapReduce syntax. And right? because I'm familiar with SQL and, it, and it, the language to invoke these analytical functions is very close to SQL, my ability to get there quickly is yeah. there. I don't have to know how to program in Java to invoke a k-means function. I just call it, I understand its predicates, and I apply that to my data source, and out comes my answer. Yep. To me, that enables the analytically nimble organization. I think that's critical. Yep. You know, the, the ability to exploit data, I think, is probably the most important thing that an organization can do today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Aster gives people. It removes all those technical barriers that were there. And trust me, my 25 plus years is, is <laughs> I call myself a programmer analyst even today. Uh, believe me, if I could have had some of these functions, you know, even seven, eight years ago, it would have been a huge time savings for right. getting things done. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a hacker at heart. So when I would run into these brick walls previously, I, I would invest the time to say, okay, well, I'm going to try and use Java or Perl and get mm -hmm. around this and manipulate this and feed my results in here. You know, and so six you days think, later, it, it, exactly. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, you know, how does this start scaling? And you're right. It's like you get to Aster and you realize. 
I could have done this with a couple lines of code, you know, or mm -hmm. this, it can be so much easier. Um, Not to mention, you know, you've got, you've got, we talked about padding and, and things like that, but there's so many other analytical genres that are involved in master, you know, you have text, you've got stats, you've got, you know, clustering, you've got graph, you know, all these different things that are all invoked very similarly. And then if you can master one, it's really more about mastering the context of the analytic and understanding when to apply that analytic and yep. less about the technical barriers to get there. Yes. And that to me is the most critical thing about Aster. Uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. I think, you know, we talk about barriers to entry. The, the barrier to entry, for example, for, uh, for, for, for running k-means. I mean, it, if you are going to have to go in and write the code from scratch or get some kind of library and write it in Java or whatever you're doing, as opposed to, to just writing a, a kind of SQL statement or an extension to SQL that, that allows you to use this out of the box function, you now, as long as you can conceptually understand this is what k-means is, you're, you're totally eliminating this requirement of having to program it out. Right? Not only so. that, you're absolutely right. Let's talk about k-means or minhash, or let's talk about these things a little bit further. They are such an, it's such an esoteric type of analytic that there's never, it's never one precise answer. There's always lots of uh, tuning and things that you have to do to, to make it you know, better. Mm -hmm. It's never perfect, right? So if you've got a code and you've got you know, 10,000 lines of code to perform your games, <laughs> the ability to, to tune and express that, 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 that complexity is, is uh, just an enormous yeah. task, right? With yeah. our situation, you change a few predicates or you prep your data differently and you, you've got a different result. And that, I think, is one of the most interesting things about it. Totally. And that's this, this concept of iterative analytics and being able to just run these things, you know, run it, change something, run it, change something. And, it, and it re you really can do that. And it yeah. becomes discovery. And it's not, I need to go back into my code and who knows what programming language you're using, but do I need to compile it again? What do I need to do before the next run? What, what lines need to be changed every time? Now you do just have this, you know, relatively limited set of parameters that you can focus on and do all the, the tuning uh, each time between runs. Absolutely. It's, it's really, really powerful because I feel that if you can flip that 80-20 rule where 80% of your time is used in data load and prep and 20% of your time is used for actual analytic development. Because here's the thing. Wall Street doesn't come to a company and go, how many lines of code do you have? <laughs> We're going to value you on how complex you are. They don't. They, they actually devalue you based on your complexity. That if I can shrink down the number of lines of code, if I can shrink down my code surface area, that's what I call it, and actually reduce that complexity and spend more time on what matters, my analytic, my analytic output, quali doing the quality assurance against my analytics to make sure they're right, iterating more to perfect them, and I can get to a, the, the same answer in less time or a better answer in less time, then I've actually done value to my organization. Time to insight, absolutely. Absolutely, and I've given my organization more time to operationalize an analytic too, because there's more runway. Yep. And I think that's the, let's face it, you know, I, I don't know about if this is true of your experiences, but it is mine. Technology is easy. It's changing people and process, the actors inside of the process. That really makes the difference. If I can build the most sophisticated, amazing churn analytic in the world, if there's not a group or a group of people that aren't going to change their business processes in order to accept my analytic in, into changing their churn model, then it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not worthwhile. Yeah. And the higher the complexity, the more code I have to write, the, 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 the more difficult it is for me to change telemetry and direction reduces my ability to operationalize. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. All right, so hey, Russ, this is a decent conversation. That's decent. It was even better than decent. Was, was it? Yeah, it was hey, good. I got you this <laughs> right here. I got you this because now you're a big shot on big data with me. Officially, and you've got to you got to have a pipe because uh, big shots. You got to do this. This is important. So you can put bubbles in this. No tobacco. None of that weird stuff. I know I'm in California. Yeah, it's cool, but none of that weird stuff. Bubbles will do. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Meantime, Russ. Thank you. <laughs>